My name's Laura Ellen Bacon. I'm a sculptor. I've been a sculptor for about 20 years. I did a degree in applied arts, um, about the turn of the millennium now. I'm very inspired by natural form, but in the sense that nature still has the power to surprise us. The work's always abstract, uh, so it's, it's never figurative, uh, but I, I enjoy making forms that feel like sort of natural phenomena. Um, forms that have an energy to them and look as if they have maybe manoeuvred themselves into position. Most of all, I enjoy things that I can work with um, simply using my hands. I like to use materials en masse. I like to be able to accumulate them, layer them, compact them shape them, twist them. I was invited to create a piece of work at the Rural Life Museum. On the back wall, there is a fabulous old black and white photograph of an enormous haystack. There's so much energy in that form. I get very excited about a haystack. Um, but it's, it's, it's large and it's been shaped and it's full and it appealed to me so much. In the museum upstairs there's a saddlery area and there is a very old um, rush, um, maybe sedge, woven plaited um, animal collar. So on a smaller scale that appealed to me as well because they're materials from, you know, from the environment that have been woven and, and shaped for a purpose. I was able to use local materials and um, very much wanted to convey that sense of energy that's in the environment and that sense of energy that um, people and animals contribute to um, this gathering and harvesting and working of the land. With reference to the collar, uh, I did a bit of research and I often thought that these collars help the animal pull the load and that's wrong. They help the animal push the load from inside the collar and at one point I'd nearly called the artwork push because it was about that sense of all of that material and um, harvest and cultivation and the muscle behind that but the muscle inside pushing. Uh, but the artwork became muscle mass because I was thinking about this accumulation and density. It's, you know, it's strand by strand of reed um, accumulated and, and massed with my hands. I always have a design at the beginning of creation, uh, but naturally the work evolves as it's being made. And as is very typical with all of my work, I'm moving around it all the time. I'm physically sort of hammering, tying, lay layering, accumulating. I had a clay model. Clay is obviously very different to, to read, but that was very useful to draw some fluidity and texture. So there's a bit of processing of the reed that goes on in the studio. It's all cut down and, and bundled. And once it's all bundled together and it's massed into the work, it's dense. And I, I do like to sort of pause and remember the airiness of the very tall reeds as they were, as they were growing at Oldborough. And then they are, I feel like I construct with them really because they're, they're worked onto a framework, sometimes just worked onto themselves. They're, um, they're built up and pegged down, uh, they're pierced and bashed with willow, <laughs> willow pegs that run all the way through them. Um, and it, it's, very, it's very much assembled. The work's going on the ground floor of the museum um, nearby uh, a fabulous display of agricultural machinery. It's having it on a, a sort of stark white plinth didn't feel quite right in the setting somehow. And there's something about um, very utilitarian pallets which are for lifting commodities and you know they're, they're uh, and I felt I wanted the work to sort of grow over those as if it's something um, which has indeed been harvested, processed, sorted, worked um, but it still have, has a life. 
I hope with a bit of information about the local material and how close that is, of course, to the museum, uh, that people uh, might f feel uh, that wonderful abundance of that natural material on their doorstep. I'd really love to work with this material again. I'd love to work with it in, in a larger setting. This particular work is not designed for the outdoors but the potential for that um, to be adapted um, for outside is really inspiring. We're in Altborough in North Lincolnshire. When you come out into this fabulous landscape, it's got beauty all of its own. There's a small team of volunteers, Altborough volunteer group, um, who are cutting the reed this morning. A lot of what the artwork is about is that a fabulous volume of natural material in the area and so to see that accumulate gently through the day everybody cutting and piling and sorting is lovely. This material is growing about three miles away from the museum which is a wonderful opportunity to, to use the local materials. When the sculpture's made, all of those reeds will all be compacted and worked tightly into a shape that will seem very soft, at the same time very dense. So as we harvest it today, um, we're cutting the reed right at the base. Um, and I'm sort of aware as we're cutting it, uh, I, I'm thinking about the lengths that I'll be using it and how I'm going to compact that and layer it and accumulate it in the artwork. The physical feeling of um, the reeds and where they, where they come from has to feed itself into the work and that, that kind of flow and delicacy has got to be there so um, it's very important that I gather it myself. <laughs>